Does your quad weigh over 300 grams ready to fly in a race? If it does, maybe you should look at an ultralight. Today we're going to look at this ultralight, it's the B5210. <laughs> This is my B5210 quadcopter. It is by far the lightest 5 inch propeller quad I've ever built. Most of the racing quads that I've built come anywhere between two, uh, 290 on up to about 350, somewhere in that range. This one actually comes in at about 260. So this is pretty light. So here's my purple 215 sitting next to my B5210. And I'm going to go ahead and put these on a scale just to show you the difference. Now this is the B5215 just like it's just like it's about to run in a race. So it has the battery strap on the bottom, props on it, and everything. So get this thing up on the quad and we'll weigh this. It comes in about 365 grams. So this is a pretty big beast. but. Because it's so big, it ha like I was saying earlier, it maintains its altitude pretty well as it's going through a course. It's pretty easy to maintain on the straightaways. It doesn't do a lot of up and down just because the weight is helping hold it in place. Now this is the B Fight 210, and this one, like I said, is what I would call an ultralight. And it comes in, make sure I'm getting it on the scale. Put it this way. It comes in at... 269. So this one's almost 100 grams lighter than the uh, purple 215. That is a huge difference when it comes to racing. These ultralight quads will pull out of dives very quickly. They'll also d react as soon as you tell it to do something, it's going to do it. The heavier quads like this purple 215 weighing in at 350, they're a little less likely to, to <laughs> respond as quickly they will they are fast and they do have powerful motors but these having such a light weight to them seem to respond so much faster if you want to build an ultralight quadcopter the first thing you need to do is start with a frame this frame here weighs about 60 grams and you want to stay within 60 to even low 70s for an ultralight frame next thing you need to do is start looking at different sizes of motors you want to find motors that weigh you know, 25 or less, if you start if you start negotiating on 26 and 27, you're just kind of defeating the purpose of building an ultralight. You kind of want to stay in the 25 or less. Then you also want to start looking at 4-in-1 ESCs. In this case, I'm using a 35 amp 4-in-1 uh, ESC. This actually was on special at Banggood here, and I think they're still on sale. They're only like 30 bucks. Looks like this. I got another one <laughs> for my next quad. And uh, it's a Racer Star. It's a 35 amp and it's all in one and the best thing is they're like less than 30 bucks. So they're, they're real hard to beat. And it actually works real well, haven't had any problems. I'm using some T-Motor Air Gear 200 motors on here. And like I said, these are uh, weighing about 23 grams each. And that's put the motor with the nut on it and the wire on the scale and that's what you get. Um, the, also on here, I have this micro uh, run cam Swift. Again, you're trying to use all light components so you want to get the light, lightest one you can. In this case, I haven't seen anything better than these micro swifts. You can also get different knockoff ones of micros. A lot of companies are making their own variations of the same thing, but they're all essentially the same camera. Um, on here, I also have a beta flight flight board, and I have a little ultra light uh, fly sky or free sky receiver, so it connects up to the Tyrannus. Now, back here on the back, you don't want to do this if you're doing ultra light. Have all this extra wire, but I kind of planned on something different and then it didn't work out so I ended up just taping it <laughs> to the arm to keep it out of the props. Another thing that's getting real big is the turtle mode and that's where if your quadcopter is upside down you can actually reverse a couple of the propellers and it'll flip it over and you can take off again. Theoretically it's supposed to work. Well the problem is that with this one especially if it's upside down all the props are in the grass it's not going to go anywhere. So you want to get what they just all these different shark fins and this is just one that I designed for this B fight and you can pull off this top plate put this one on in its place and then it sits like this and uh, when you crash upside down the shark fin is supposed to keep two of your propellers up out of the grass so that way it can flip over and hopefully get back up and get going again during the race now I, I printed this one out of PLA that was not a good idea it, it's I have an, another one and it snapped on the, the first time I crashed it upside down I actually designed the top plate and then the shark fin was someone else's and I just stuck it on here and I gave credit to them on the uh, Thingiverse. It also has little zip tie holes in case something happens. You can zip tie it to another frame or, you know, whatever you want to do. 
Another thing I recommend when you're building your next quad, pay attention to whether or not your um, video receiver has smart audio. Now this one is, if you look here, it's this one up here on the third, the third stacked one here. This one has smart audio built into it. Smart audio allows you to change the channel and the freak, uh, f the channel, the band, and the power through your goggles through an OSD. Now, how do you get the OSD? Well, you need to make sure that your camera and your video transmitter are connecting down to your flight board and that your flight board has OSD on it. Anymore, if I'm buying a flight board, it has to have OSD because I'm an OSD freak and I has, has to have it now. And also, it makes it super, super easy to change your channel. You show up to the race, they say, oh, are you on the right channel? You say, yes, they check it, you're not. Put your goggles on, change the channel, boom, Bob's your uncle, you're on the right channel. And also you can change your power while you're in there, make sure you're doing 25 instead of 200 and overpowering everybody. Uh, another thing you wanna make sure is that when you're building these ultralights, you keep your antenna off of the top plate. Yes, it's real tempting to use this little hole that's here and have your antenna come out the top, the problem is you're building an ultralight and it's going to catch, guaranteed. And you know, you put the antenna up here on top so you can get the maximum range possible for your antenna and for your range. But if you're racing, which is probably the reason you built an ultralight in the first place, it doesn't really matter so much where your antenna is. In fact, here's one of these TBS antennas and it is just strapped back here on the back to the bottom arm and it does perfectly fine at races. It's a little sketchy when I take off because it's kind of down inside the little takeoff little u-shaped thing but it eventually takes off and gets in the air and does fine when you show up to a race most people are going to be flying 1300 batteries like this this is actually rated 95 to 190 c it's a panda battery these are awesome these have great endurance and they also help your your quad not sag very much even when they have a large amp draw just because they're good batteries now with the ultralight it's using light motors lightweight motors and hopefully low amp draw motors and they tend to be a little bit less powerful. Well, because of that, you can run something like an 850. This one's actually rated 75C to 150C. An 850 battery will do excellent on ultralights. Now, if you try to gun it in a straightaway, you'll notice a little bit of sag in the, a uh, little bit of battery sag in the voltage, which is to be expected because this isn't a huge battery. But you're also not choosing this battery because it's because it has huge amp draw. You're choosing this because it's light and it can fly your ultralight quad easy for two minutes long enough for you to complete a race. So when you're building your next quad, think about the components that you're choosing. Make sure that you've seen weights on how much they weigh. Make sure that you know that the stuff you buy is actually going to be pretty decent and not crash and break. This one, if you're wondering why this propeller is white, it's because this bell flew off during a race and they are compression fitted on. They're not, they don't have a set screw on, they're compression fit. So I put the white one on here to remind me to change this one, which I did. And then I got home and I realized that this one is actually broken as well. This one came off and they're, they are compression fitted on there. I, I doubt you can see it, but there's little grooves on the shaft that this thing sits into. So, I don't know. Do I recommend these? I, I don't know. They're light, they work real well, but I've broken two of them so far, and I don't know. I would not tell you to buy these, but if you want, you know, go ahead. I bought two sets of them, and thinking I build two quads, now I have two extra motors sitting around that are waiting for the other two to break. Anyway, if you have any questions about this B-Fight 210 or any questions about ultralights or comments about ultralights or opinions about ultralights, leave them down in the comments. I'll respond to you as best I can and answer questions as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.